Hey guys, meet Ronald Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. I want to take you to the blizzard, into the blizzard. This is uh, this is Mount Bachelor up there in Oregon, and it has just been a full-on blizzard all day long. I mean, look at that video, all that wind pushing that snow around. Uh, heavy snow, high winds will continue these blizzard conditions all night into uh, the morning of 110. I mean, things are pretty much shut down up there as a result of this. <laughs> it's just extremely low visibility up there right now. Look at that. Uh, up there at Mount Bachelor, and that's the case up to Timberline and uh, Rainier and Stevens, Mount Baker getting just hammered by this. Let me take you downstream. So that storm system that's nailing the Pacific Northwest is sending moisture down the jet through Idaho and into the Tetons. This is Jackson Hole. It is snowing hard there right now. It will snow all night into the day tomorrow, throughout most of the day tomorrow. I'm expecting about a foot of accumulation out of this wave. That's Jackson Hole. Let me take you to um, Alta. So really just starting to see that light snow move into Alta. It's going to snow all night and throughout the day tomorrow um, with uh, quite a bit of accumulation. But the really big period for the Wasatch, and it's going to be big, is going to be 112 through 115. I'll, I'll definitely talk more about that here in just a sec. Let me take you to my uh, my latest info here. Here's what I'm seeing this afternoon. So storm number two continues, 19 through 111. Now it's going to make its move eventually uh, tomorrow out of the Pacific Northwest and more into the interior. I'll show you the uh, future radar here in just a sec. Uh, with those blizzard conditions continuing in Oregon and Washington tonight, tomorrow morning. Storm number three, 112 to 115. That one's going to be potent, especially for some of the mountain ranges across the interior. That Arctic air is going to come spilling in. And really crank up those snow ratios. I mean, we're going to have some serious snow efficiency going on uh, in the Wasatch with those numbers continuing to trend up. Looking for high efficiency western and northwest Colorado as well. I'll show you what those numbers look like. And then there is that storm number four. I talked about it this morning um, during my update. Now the track has shifted a little bit more to the north. Um, which is going to shift the snow more towards the northern tier and then kind of drop it down with the jet through Wyoming and Colorado. I'll show you what that looks like. Northeast, you've got a bomb cyclone headed your way. It's developing. It's deepening right now. I'll show it to you on water vapor, 19110. Another storm system very similar in stature, 112, 113, and another big one, which could be all snow, 116 and 117. All right, over to water vapor. All right, so here's the view out west. There's our big storm system number two diving down into the interior. Um, another storm here, another storm here. So what will happen next is there's going to be a chunk of Arctic air sitting up here that's going to rotate down with an Arctic front and storm number three. And that's what's going to really draw that in uh, out of Canada, Alaska, down into the Pacific Northwest and into the interior. All right, so that's water vapor. And again on water vapor, and here's the view. We look at this uh, this is rapidly deepening area of low pressure. Water vapor, your moisture, and this is low level water vapor uh, moisture on this one. So that's going to be your, your uh, whites, your greens, and your blues, drier air, oranges, and reds. So let me mark this thing. Big time area of low pressure. It's going to move up into the northeast. You've got heavy snow wrapping in on the north, northwest side, and then eventually up here as that moisture runs into the colder air, you're going to have snow. Heavy snow at the onset of this at the big ski areas of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Then it's going to change over to rain, snow, or rain. Uh, probably early 110, and we're talking 70 mile an hour winds and probably power outages in the northeast with this thing. Let me show you how all this moves. Here's the, the forecast radar. That's the current state of affairs. Watch the low drop into the interior. Snow hits Colorado overnight into tomorrow. Lots of wind coming as well. And then the backside swipes the Sierra, and here comes the low down in New Mexico and Colorado departs right there. So it departs late 111. Now by 112, here comes storm number three. Arctic front, the low is, is, is going to ride that front all the way down, and that flow, that transport, guys, is serious into the Wasatch here from 112 to 115. Again, a lot of things coming together to, to really generate these orographics. And take a look at uh, Colorado. You've got snow developing there as well with a lot of wind on Friday. Wait till you see the wind. Um, here it is on 13. Here comes the low out of California. Makes its move down to the, uh, the four corners, and then eventually... Um, into Colorado, New Mexico, and will depart uh, by the 15th out of uh, both states. Then we start to look to the Pacific Northwest for our next storm system. Let me show it to you here. So let me take you one beyond. There's 14. Here's 115. That storm moving out of Colorado, New Mexico. You can see already see the cloud shield moving into the Pacific Northwest. That low is going to come out of the Gulf of Alaska and Canada. Here's 117. You can see now versus this morning. This morning the low was further to the south. Now it's further to the north, and so that's going to feed moisture through northern Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and eventually 
Wait till you see the jet. It'll drop it down into Colorado as well. In fact, here is that jet pattern. So this is tomorrow, 110, um, that uh, second storm system, broad, deep area, big broad trough there to kind of bring it in with cold air into the Intermountain West. So very snowy and windy tomorrow. Uh, here's 112. Uh, powerful co-location of the northern branch and the subtropical. I mean, look at that with that Arctic front slamming to the south. Um, that's a heck of a pattern, a west-northwest flow just blasting, blasting the, the Wasatch in western and northwest Colorado. Um, here's one better. So here's 115, one more in the future. That's right as that area of low pressure is exiting Colorado and New Mexico and Wyoming and moving away. And then it moves into the northeast. Um, here's 118, so even further down the road. A bit of high pressure along the west coast, um, but on 118, you can kind of see that storm. 116, 117, 118 dropping straight north to south with this jet orientation. From Montana to Wyoming into Colorado, everything west of there is probably out of it. It's probably dry. Um, look at this. So this is a forecast wind gust in Colorado. This is Friday at 5 p.m. As that storm system moves in, uh, just getting jet blasted with this west northwest type of flow. And I mean, we're going to see winds of 50 to 80 miles an hour, 50 certainly to 70, maybe even higher. Look at Quandra getting blasted. This is unfortunately will wreck the snowpack. Um, here's one more. This is uh, this is Saturday at 8 a.m. The winds are still very strong, um, 40 to 60, 70 mile an hour gusts there, just raking the high peaks of Colorado. Obviously, this will lead to problems. Uh, with avalanche danger, but uh, that's the winds, man. The winds are going to be cranking um, across Utah and Colorado on Friday and Saturday with that jet blast. All right, let me show you the new uh, grand totals map. So the rest of today through 118, the numbers are incredible uh, for Little Cottonwood. I mean, we're looking at in Utah, we're looking at you know 70 plus inches. Um, the range is, it's a fat range. I mean, we're looking at, you know, 70 to 100 inches for a little cottonwood, probably 50 uh, plus in big cottonwood, and then uh, a solid three feet probably for Park City and Deer Valley Snow Basin. Uh, Western and Northwest Colorado still looks pretty solid to me. Two to three feet of snow will do it. I'm going to get jet blasted with that. couple of feet for the Tetons before the front slips through. And looking pretty good through Idaho and big stuff still on the way for parts of uh, Oregon. And the, in the Sierra, you've got a couple or three feet on the way with these, uh, these remaining storm systems. All right, so let me break that down. Let me zoom in on that I-70 corridor. Central to Northern Mountains of Colorado, again, a couple of feet, certainly more as you go west, and then certainly more up in northwest Colorado, Steamboat Buff Pass, pushing three to four feet up in those areas. All right, here's period one, rest of today through the 11th. So this accounts for storm number two. You can see where the totals are biggest. Anywhere in purple is over a foot. A couple of feet for Alta Snowbird out of this, about a foot for Jackson Hole, Grand Targhee, and some nice numbers through uh, Oregon and Washington still yet to come. All right, uh, and here's the second period. So this is 112 to 115. This is going to be a huge period, 50 plus for a little Cottonwood uh, Canyon there in the Wasatch. In Colorado, we've got one to two feet on the wave through that period. And again, it, a lot of this, things are just lining up perfectly with um, this, this very cold air, high snow ratios and ore graphics. Um, and here is that final storm system. You can see the shift from this morning's data. Now it's further to the north. Everything's sort of arcing around the, the jet coming through Montana, Wyoming, and dumping down into Colorado, 116 through 118. One last stop here. And this is the northeast. So again, you've got two very strong storm systems, uh, powerhouses really, uh, 19 to 110 and 112 to 113. But both will push the major ski areas from snow into a rain-snow mix or rain at times. The third storm, 116 to 117, could be pure snow with a better track and colder air. So you can see the potential. It's heavy snow for the Northeast when you account for all three of the storm systems. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it and take care.